Partial and semi-partial correlations. First thing you should know is that they're only used in multiple regression. So let's take a DV, also known as the criterion variable. That is what you're going to try to predict. Now this circle, this Venn diagram, represents the variance in the scores. So let's pretend we had 150 test scores ranging from 0 to 100. So what you're going to do is you're going to come up with some independent variables, some IVs, and measure those about each subject in your study to try to predict the outcome in the DV. These IVs are called predictor variables because with them you're trying to predict the subject's outcome in the DV, trying to find out their final test scores. Uh, so when you switch it over to a, um, a model, you don't call them IV1, IV2. You, you label them X1, X2, X3, Xn. You can have as many as you want. So we're going to go ahead and pretend that we got a formula. This is just made up. So 44.2 is the uh, slope intercept. That's, that's where it crosses the line when X equals 0. And then the rest of these have little coefficients to them. So x1 is 0.03, that's not very big. 0.06 times x2, not very big. 0.32 times x3, that is fair good size. So that, the bigger the size, the more variance explained. So we have this generic model. Right, there's your x1, x2. However much of the big DV circle is overlapped, that's how much that specific variable explains the variance. Anything not in one of these little circles is called error. It's not error of, of the actual variance, it's error in research predictability. So we're going to take an example. We have three different IVs, call it A, B, and C. We're going to try to use these IVs to predict the outcome of the DV for each individual subject. Let's pretend their age, height, and shoe size from each subject. And let's pretend again that this is the formula that we get, usually using SPSS. And we will adjust these accordingly. So A, the first variable, can explain about that much of the variance. B, that much of the variance. C is a little bit bigger, that much of the variance. Okay, so let's just keep going. So a partial correlation of B, for example, is this chunk right here. It's where B and DV overlap. Okay? And it, because it's a partial, it also includes any kind of overlap of the other IVs. Okay? So, but a partial correlation is just this picture. It's the overlap here. I hope this little red thing helps. So this red little chunk right here is the partial correlation of B. Got it? So a semi-partial correlation of B goes like this. It's almost the same thing, but it wants the unique contribution of B by itself. So it's just this little chunk right in here with no overlap included, okay? So that little chunk right in here is your semi-partial. See? Semi-partials, you do not overlap B with anything else. So it's just that little tiny chunk there, and you're only talking about maybe 3% of the, of the variance being explained. Not very helpful. But let's go over it real quick one more time. So remember this. A partial cor correlation of B takes into account all the overlap of B on the DV plus the overlap of A and C. Okay, A semi-partial correlation, there is no overlap. And it's just this little chunk here. Boom. So that's the difference between a partial correlation and a semi-partial correlation. And I really hope that helps. Thank you very much. Bye.